Hi, Scissorin here. I, uh, I've been playing Winter Orb now and I did get it to level 100 and I wanted to make like a fully updated guide. I played two different versions of the build now and I want to make, uh, this is going to be like very comprehensive talking about the differences and uh, trying to make it easier for new players to understand and all the changes compared to the, uh, if you watch the first video that was made before the gem was in the game, we only had like the stats on it. So we're going to be talking about that now and hopefully the guide will cover everything and help everyone. So if you haven't followed one of my guides before, uh, you really want to download Path of Building, this program here. And uh, something I do in the path, I'll provide a link in the description down below as well. And something I do is that I show a step-by-step -step leveling. So you know exactly where to put your skill points and I also have different gear sets. You can see here it's like what we would use early on um, in the leveling process just try to get gear with like life and resists something like uh, a curry ward is the Jane amulet which can be useful to use while leveling as well other than that cold rim tabula if you can and uh, just basic gear and then we have like an endgame winter orb which is the one I'm using currently with the with the combs um, and I actually forgot to switch into combs here but uh, and the other setup I was using was an impulsa setup so so there's a few there's a few differences as well and um, we're gonna go over those now and in the in the skills setup you can see that I have like here's what you level with early on level 1 to 8 8 to 12 12 plus and um, I have two example characters you guys can look at for everything if the if the path of building is a little hard to follow um, you can for example click here import and this will always work my profile is always open and then you can um, this are an angry pupper is the impulsive setup I had uh, which is like 90% optimized for how I would say the impulsive setup should be and then the um, the comb setup is called impulsive lag because the last one sort of died because of impulsive lagging out uh, so you can look at gem setups and exactly what I was using end game there um, so you have like your different heralds I can delete these because this is from the, the blade vortex stuff but um, yeah so I've actually started using herald of ash because you get uh, I think it's like 12% more damage with fire damage and I switch over half half of my damage with cold to fire so you get a 6% more damage multiplier and you do get the herald of ash explosions so that's quite nice because you didn't really have anything to restore with your last mana so it is a pretty big boost there um, and you can see all the things you need here. It's very important to have decoy totem while leveling. We don't use shield charge anymore. It got kind of nerfed very hard. And uh, I've just started using face run instead. In the impulsive version, if you look at the character, you can see that I'm using uh, arcane surge and face run. So I mostly have that in my in my other setup with the with the comb's heart and stuff. I have arcane surge for my weapon. You can do that for your impulsive weapon as well. And uh, let's see. I'll talk a little bit more about. Uh, early stuff like the way you can get the the mace this is like very very cheap you use uh, scorched fossils on a I think it's item level 68 it just whatever as long as it's a shaped mace it can roll the enemies killed explode dealing 5% of their life as fire damage now this is a smaller explosion than impulsa it also creates less lag um, and that's why I ended up with growing with this version late game because the lag is insane and uh, this is a budget one I used. I got lucky and I hit the damage penetrates 10% fire damage, which should, in theory, work with the enemy skill explode thing. And then I've crafted the 49% increased spell damage, 6% non chaos damage as extra chaos. And then the fire damage is just a easier to roll thing. Um, three dragons is something I used for quite a while in the build. And the reason for using that was um, to make the fire explosion shock. However, if you have an Ashes Mirror, the when, whenever you killed something, that will uh, add global damage to the lightning. So if you have an Ashes Mirror, or you're able to craft flat added lightning on your ring, if you have an open slot, then that'll do the job as well. Then you can drop your three dragons. I probably should have dropped it way earlier than what I did, but I didn't really think about it. Um, for chest as well, I wouldn't really recommend trying to link another chest. If you have a six thing, something lying around, you can use anything else as long as you can fit gems in it and it's not a bad idea to for example run a six link vol blade vortex early on and a four link winter orb or a five link 
And um, Winds of Change isn't necessarily that great either. You can get these fairly cheap. You just search for increased damage with hits against chilled enemies on PoE trade as an affix. And uh, these drop from the um, Temple of Atsuodal. So they can be very, very good. You're mostly always chilling because you're an elementalist. And uh, this early game example doesn't have resists on it. Just make sure you get resist capped early on. Very, very important. I also don't really have any jewel examples for early on, but uh, I'll talk a little bit about that priority on jewels late game. The, the ones I was using, this was sort of the abyssal ones. Flat damage isn't amazing for Winter Orb, but uh, if you get something with like 40, 45 plus life, that can be really nice. Generally, I recommend jewels like uh, this. Area damage, projectile damage, increased damage, um, spell damage, and cast speed is really nice. Cast speed felt really good. Uh, I was trying to make my mind up about it for a while, but it also it makes the uh, Winter Orb shoot out faster, and it also makes you stack up faster. And uh, another change as well that I realized was you want to... Um, of uh this was not in the first video but i i very early go for the the double increased duration nodes that was huge like a lot of people kept asking why my winter orb lasts for like 11 seconds and that's because i was using both the increased duration nodes and i was also using the increased duration skill gem which i now would recommend for leveling uh, if you're in a tabula that's something you can switch out for bosses or more focus on your blade vortex for bossing but uh, faster casting, increased duration felt really great, especially for mapping. And then uh, we have the amulet we can talk about a bit later too. Um, so the skill tree wise, I've like taken out the minion damage version. Uh, for those of you who don't know what minion damage does, with this node, spiritual aid increases and reductions to minion damage. Basically become the same as increased damage. Doesn't let you use the minion damage gem because that's more, but it would let you use a bone helmet and stuff. That can be an okay option uh, for SSF, where you're never going to be able to get a good enchant. But uh, I, I think both face acrobatics and acrobatics is so strong, I'd even recommend that for softcore instead of going for a higher tooltip damage thing. I'm fairly happy with this setup as a skill tree thing, as the final one. This is what I ended up with at level 100. You might need, if you can't get decks on gear, I ended up needing uh, an agility point. The resist node as well, you might not need. Um, I did because I didn't get enough fire resist. But, uh, and if you get a crazy, crazy jewel, you can drop like 15% life for a 7% life jewel with damage. Could be worth it as well. So, with this build, um, ever after I got like fairly good gear, I was able to kill tier 16 bosses. Um, with support, it was a little hard. It wasn't like enough damage to comfortably carry support. Obviously, the support can't add that much damage to this build. It mostly adds a ton of survival. When I was solo, I was bursting down the tier 16 boss in maybe um, 20 to 30 seconds. We'll try to show some clips of that as well. Um, sometimes even faster, depending on um, how lucky we got. I, I was using Headhunter at one point as well, and that, that made the boss just vanish if I had buffs. Um, obviously. Um, I was mostly using a Bisco's Leash for my belt of choice, and you can get like a decent Stygian as well. Um, so you do have a lot of options. If you do have uh, other chests that you could use would be an Elder Chest, a Belly, Carcass Jack, but I wouldn't go out of my way to 6 sync these. A great, great al cheap alternative could be a plus 2 Tabula, like plus 2 AoE gems. Um, if you're going to buy one, I'd suggest plus 2 AoE over projectile because AoE can be used with both Blade Vortex and your Winter Orb in case you want to try having a really high big damage Winter Orb. Um, I mentioned earlier we're converting to fire. In hindsight, I would probably rather have a nearby enemies have minus fire resist helmet. The way you make these is um, scorched, frigid, or metallic depending on what minus resist you want and then a pristine jewel. Um, and as you can see here, this is the best enchant. So this is around, I think it's 13 or 15% more damage because you get 30% more firing frequency. And it also makes it last longer. So if I charge it up to full here, once I get a little bit more mana, you see that it now goes to 12 stacks. Lasts for 13 seconds. And uh, what the amulet does uh, in, in conjunction with duration is that you get Shaper's Presence, which is... Sort of like temp chaining yourself. You temp chain yourself, I think it's at like 33% speed. And 
Either way, like in practice, it makes your buffs, including your flasks and headhunter buffs, last 50% longer. So I would recommend getting this fairly, fairly early. Um, as far as gear priority, the first most important thing to get would be the club, like uh, Explodey Club. And then like you can do Impulse is still really good as well, but Explodey Club, most important thing. Um, then I would get the Ashes Mirror and then probably the Solstice Vigil. Chrome's Heart is mostly just for tanks, so on Softcore it is optional. And of course where anything else, it does help you a little bit with damage because quite a lot of your damage is now fire. But yeah, uh, the Biscos Leash is best in slot, the Ashes Mirror is best in slot. I use a Venturous Gamble to, this is a bad one, you ideally want 8% quant or more. Rarity is not as important, this helps you maintain like sextants and stuff, and chisels. I would recommend an opal ring if you want damage, just get like life resist, craft it with uh, the essences that do more fire damage, because you see here the majority of the damage is fire, quite a large chunk is still cold as well. Um, the boots I made with a pristine fossil and shuddering, if you get item level 86, then um, you can get the 35 ms and then the six percent if you killed recently is from shuddering i got pretty lucky with these uh leech on boots is something you really want either buy boots to have them already and then recraft them to get something usable or you can run cruel labyrinth over and over again uh anything from you know one to 40 attempts should get you it uh the reason i say cruel is because the difference between merc and urban lab is just 0.1 so no big reason to run those and they take it takes a lot longer to run that. So Cruel Lab is generally what I choose for. I want to talk a little bit about the gloves I've started using as well. So this is a pseudo six link. There's no massive benefit. I wouldn't use Solar Projectile as an actual gem, but this is the only damage gem I can get on gloves. So I'm using uh, faster casting Solar Projectiles and I also got very lucky and I hit blind, which makes you very unlikely to get hit by the enemies. The way I crafted this was just alt regaling, and I made a lot of these gloves in the past in an attempt to double corrupt them in the Temple of Atsuoto. The reason I've been trying to double corrupt them is you can get plus two AoE gems and plus two projectile gems. You can also get something else, I think. I think you can get, there's another plus gem you can get that would work as well. Duration gems, I think. And uh, this would put our Winter Orb up to um, 26 or something. Anyway, it would be... Yeah, because we craft plus two and then you get plus six and then you have a 21 so 27 winter orb and that is a huge damage increase if you're currently playing a winter orb build and you're above level 70 or 70 or above you really want to buy a level 20 20 gem like a 20 zero corrupted is going to cost you around two or three chaos it's a massive damage increase this goes for any spell damage gem really important like if you're ever using a 16 17 18 or 19 gem definitely buy that and then you can just level that up in a weapon swap uh, whatever you're actually playing you should always be leveling um gems that you can either uh corrupt to level 21 which you can see here winter orb is 21 and you can only get 21 by corrupting them so you always want to level that up in your weapon swap um projectile speed doesn't seem to matter that much which is why i've dropped sniper and we don't mind that we're using slower projectiles. You can try, for example, in a tabula setup, switching between slower and faster projectiles. And I couldn't notice a difference, at least not enough where I cared. Um, the way these gloves are crafted, once you get either slower and faster projectiles together, ideally you want to regal any suffix. I think, yeah, any suffix. Uh, so in this case, we got blind, which is a good one, or, you know, resist would be great. And uh, then you can multi-mod, which is two exalts, and then you can craft AoE gems and projectile gems. So this, this Winter Orb is now level 23, which is great. That's a lot more base damage. Um, so they cost one divine each for the AoE gems and stuff. Uh, I got pretty unlucky on the corruption. It doesn't really do much, especially for me. I'm running temp chains for free from the amulet. And there's a few different setups as well. Like if I wasn't running the amulet, you can run, uh, instead of the Blasphemy Temp Chain setups, you can get Enhance and Arcane Surge. Uh, or Increased Duration. I don't really need Increased Duration because it lasts 4 seconds. That's pretty useful. Uh, sorry, 6 seconds, which is more than the actual cast cooldown. Uh, I'm trying to like, make sure that I cover everything in this guide that could possibly be asked as well. It's going to be a little bit longer than normal. 
Um, for frenzy charges, which is really important for your face run, I'm using Green Dream. If I wasn't using Green Dream, I would, in this setup, get rid of Cold to Fire and then probably get rid of Herald of Ash so you just have a little bit unreserved for a while until you can get that. Because um, you really do need increased duration in GMP. And then, uh, yeah, Green Dream or Ice Spire. I'd basically say you want, you want to have frenzy charges. Uh, let's see. And then I can log over to my Impulsa character to show a little bit about that as well. You can see that it's obviously you have a lot more gem slots. A lot more gem slots here. Same thing with the Venters. Um, aspect of the Spider. You can either buy a shit ring just by searching for a Grand Level 20 Aspect of the Spider. Or you can ask in Trade Chat if somebody can craft this onto your item. The problem with that is obviously someone can scam you. So try to ask for collateral when they're crafting for you. Um, I ended up using these instead of Winds of Change. And even with like just like plus one gem levels, that's really, really nice. I would recommend uh, minus fire damage resists. And this is why this this version, because um, you get the explosion from Impulsa, it's a lot more laggy, but this has a lot more single target. So that is pretty important. It's really nice. Potion wise, Dying Sun was really big. I felt like it gave a big single target and clear speed increase um, at series. Promise is pretty much mandatory, especially with um, the Immortal Syndicate doing so much chaos damage. And uh, when you get a Dying Sun, you really want to get a... This is pretty important, actually. You really want to get a Immune to Corrupting Blood Jewel. You can still get hit by Bleeds, but um, I'll show mine. Right, here's an example of a Corrupting Blood Jewel. These are fairly cheap, and I had loads of them that I just dropped. And um, it's just... You put it up here for more life and it makes you into corrupting blood so just use a valorum and uh, the club by the way does also stack with impulse so you could use both however you don't really need that it's already enough damage to kill everything and uh, because it scales with things like elemental overload and um it's sort of shorter it's sort of shorter so it doesn't do that much to stack them one thing that's really important is now, I don't have Cast When I'm Shaking Immortal Call Righteous Fire in the same setup at the moment, and I don't really need the increased duration on the Righteous Fire, especially the Amulet helps out with this, but if you are using the setup where you have Immortal Call, uh, sorry, increased duration in the same setup as Righteous Fire, you need to make sure that your Cast When I'm Shaking is level 1 for the required level 38, and your Righteous Fire needs to have level 40 or above. If it's the same 38 or below, then your cast when I'm shaken will set up, will will call up your normal righteous fire and you will die. Um, so pretty important, pretty important. And um, once it's above 38, um, bandits for this character is skill point, really important. Uh, you don't really need a Lyra at all. You're not crit. You are using elemental overload though. So, you know, if you get spell crit on any gear, that'll help keep the uptime more. Um, Pantheons is Solaris and Shikari. I would recommend upgrading the Gorgon and um, Terror of the Infinite Drifts. That's for the poison immunity. So another really good example to bring up is the chance to gain Onslaught on kill. This is how I gain Onslaught on the majority of my characters. Uh, in this case, I got really lucky and also got the Corrupted Blood cannot be inflicted on you on the same one. And this is what I ended up using on my level 100 push um, to fit Dying Sun. So finally, um, after having run both Impulsa and Combs, uh, if you're on Softcore, you can play on Predictive mode for the Impulsa version by turning on uh, Predictive here. You have to be in the menu to do it. Now, that will cause some rubber banding and stuff, but you should feel quite a lot less laggy. Uh, your character might like teleport back in time sometimes, and yeah, that's annoying, but it feels smoother to play. I would not recommend doing that on Hardcore. Um, both versions are really good. Um, I prefer the Combs version. I really do. It's less laggy, add enough damage for everything. You have like the, the Val Blade Vortex and the Val Righteous Fire that you throw down on bosses. Um, and it just, it kills the boss pretty quickly. Do your Val Righteous Fire first and then your Val BB. And, um, with, with all the stacks up then, yeah, it pretty much kills, it kills the boss. Another thing worth mentioning as well, for new players, we've gone through and uh, Mr. Madiki has made a list of where all the gems are. 
that you need. So, for example, here, Winter Orb is from Act 3, Clarissa, after doing a fixture of Fate, um, which I think is the Gravatius quest. Um, so, hopefully, if you can find the gems, this is. Uh, we'll also put some random notes in here whenever we need to. So, check out the notes section of pretty much any, like, recently made guide by me. And uh, if you have any questions, drop by my Twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash scissorin and uh, we'll be able to help you with any questions there. Thanks for watching and try to die less than I do.